Hello viewers and welcome back. Glad to have you back with me in the shop. Today we're going to cover a very illuminating subject. Glad to have you all back here with me in the shop today. The subject we're going to be covering today is flashlights. In particular, Maglite flashlights. The reason I'm doing this is because a few days ago, the Tool Bear did a flashlight comparison on his channel. I'll put a link in the description below. If you haven't checked out the Tool Bear, aka Redbeard, go check out his channel. He's got some pretty cool stuff there. Anyway, so one of the lights that he used in his comparison was a mag light. And in the comments, a lot of people made reference to the fact that mag lights have a problem with imploding batteries. And I experienced that problem myself, but I refused to give up on my old friend here. Believe it or not, this flashlight is approximately 30 years old. 25 to 30, somewhere in there. I forget exactly when I got it, but it was late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. So this is a vintage mag light right here. And it suffered from the same exact problem where the batteries exploded inside the case of the flashlight. And it pretty much became a club. That was it. It wouldn't work anymore and I couldn't get the batteries out. So today I'm going to explain what to do so you don't have to give up on your old flashlight and you can keep it going forever. Now... These are a quality flashlight. These are made here in uh, Ontario, California, and it's all stamped right on the ring here. You can see Maglite, and it has the address and everything right there. They're very proud of the product that they produce. And these are the favorite of law enforcement professionals throughout the nation, and possibly other countries as well. The reason that Maglite is so popular is because Flashlights have existed for a long time. I mean, uh, you go back to the early, you know, 1900s, somewhere around there. Flashlights have always been around. The only problem is they were poor quality. They were poor quality, poor light, poor everything. And Maglite decided to step it up a notch and make it that much better. So they made it out of a solid aluminum case. The bulbs are much brighter than most other flashlights out there. The lenses are very durable plastic and they are adjustable. You can adjust the beam on it to get uh, go from either a spotlight to a wide beam. And it is one heavy flashlight. Now, what can be both a pro can also be a con. The flashlight is made out of aluminum and aluminum has some weird tendencies as far as chemical reactions. One of them is sometimes it can react poorly with the batteries inside and that's why these are prone to having the batteries explode inside them. Now like I said this one here is a six cell and I had five out of the six cells if I remember correctly explode inside the battery inside the case here so it was really difficult to work with. Now this I'm going to show you basically a few things you can do to prevent it and then how to deal with it if it does happen. First of all, every few weeks or at least like once a month, open it up, let it breathe. Just open up the end of it and take out the cells and let the case breathe for a minute. Then just put them back in. That's all you got to do because batteries even though these are sealed batteries and they're not like uh, a battery in your car, they do tend to off gas a little bit. Not a lot, not to the point of being dangerous, but you're going to get some tiny bit of off gassing. And even though it's a microscopic amount of off gassing, think about it. This is a very small case. This is not that big of an area. Six cells breathing inside here for months on end, that gas is going to become problematic. And that gas can lead to corrosion of the batteries themselves. And all sorts of chemical reactions are taking place. And the chemical reaction between these batteries, depending on what they're made of, the wrapping on them, coming in conjunction with the aluminum case, can have some negative side effects. And that's why sometimes these will explode inside here. 
And by exploding, I mean they swell up and some of the, not liquid, but the chemicals inside there will come out. And I'm sure you've seen it. It becomes a crusty, hard mess. And if it was just around the edges, it wouldn't be a big deal. But when they swell up inside this aluminum case, they practically weld themselves inside here. So you can't get them out. So the thing is, let's cover how to get them out. First of all, before we do that, this, like I said, it's almost a 30-year-old flashlight. And the bulb is still the original one. And it still works great. I'll show you in a minute. But in case you don't know, inside the base cap here, there is a bulb hidden behind that foam. So you do have a spare bulb in there. If your bulb goes out, you can buy one if you wish. Or just in an emergency, pull out the spare bulb inside here. Pop it in there and you can keep on going. A question some people have about these flashlights is, are they waterproof? Well, for legal reasons, Maglite will not say they're waterproof. They'll say they're water resistant. I'd say they're pretty darn close to being waterproof because if you look here, you'll see that the base has a really good seal on it to keep water and moisture from getting inside. That's a good little O-ring right there. And if you open up the other end over here, which I'll do in a minute, it has a similar O-ring. So it gives you a really good tight seal. So anyway, as far as uh, opening this up and getting to it, imagine all these cells were jammed up inside here. I couldn't do anything about it. And I couldn't, I didn't have anything that would reach all the way down in here. So if you have these all stuck inside here, try to pry the first one out so it gives you something to work with. The first one right here, try to get it out as much as you can. Use a, a, a pick or something and just try to at least work it out. You can use a tiny little bar like this, something very thin to try to get it in there and pull it out. Even if you can just work around the edges to where you can undo the corrosion and then just get that top one out. That'll give you something to work with. Then you can either pour some baking soda, Alka-Seltzer, anything like that in there to try to neutralize the chemical reaction that is taking place inside there with the battery chemicals. That may help you. It all depends how bad it is for you. I forgot about mine for a year or two before I came to open it and found it was all sealed up inside there. So don't let it go that far. So try some baking soda. Alka-Seltzer, anything like that to neutralize the chemicals first. If that doesn't work, then you got to go to step two. The next step is stand your flashlight on end like that and start pouring oil. Yes, I know. It's kind of disgusting, kind of gross. You might think it's kind of crazy, but it worked. Mine's okay. I fixed it. Put it into a container or something if you're afraid it might leak out the other side which mine didn't. It was so jammed in there, no oil came out of it. You're going to keep pouring oil in there and eventually it's going to slide down the tube here and it'll mix itself with the acids, it'll mix itself with the battery, eventually it'll soak itself in. And I'm saying eventually. It's not going to happen in a few hours. It may not even happen in a few days. I had to work at this for a few weeks, maybe a month or more. I had to work at it. I just had it standing here on my bench and I kept pouring oil inside here. It would drip down, I'd add more. It would drip down, I would add more. And eventually, they became a goopy, oily mess, but eventually I could get them to come out. And I had to scratch up the inside. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. You can see the inside is fairly scratched up. I didn't enjoy doing that, but I had to do it to get it to work. And, yep, yeah, now you can see it. It's not purdy, but the inside you don't see. It's the outside that you see. And the end result was I got these batteries out of there. Sometimes you may have to take a stick or something or a long screwdriver like this and just bang on them. Bang on them, okay? They may not move, but what you're trying to do is break that seal. Whether they move or not is irrelevant. What you're doing is banging on the battery here, or generally the opposite side. You're banging on this side because this side goes towards the light bulb. So you're banging on this side, and what you're trying to do is just shock the battery so it'll move. 
and break anything bonding it to the side. That way the oil can penetrate and you can slide these out of there. So that's what you got to do. The other side does open up also. I'll show you this. And it's well threaded in there. It takes a lot to thread it in there. And you can see the bulb is right there and that comes out very easily. You can unthread that bulb and the other side here hope you can see it. It is a plastic piece that is threaded into there. If you are able to unthread that, you can see that it has little slots to it. You can try to hit it with a screw, well not hit it, be gentle. You can try to push it with a screwdriver or a pair of pliers, long needle nose pliers like this. You can try to get them in there and try to get it to twist around and open up. See if you can do that. Mine was jammed in there. I couldn't get it undone. Made it a lot harder for me. If you can get this part to come out, then you have an open tube. And you can hit it from one side, hit it from the other side, hit it from one side, hit it from the other side. And that way you can get the batteries to slide out. So this, event, the basis of this is one solid aluminum tube. Get this out of here and it'll make your job a whole lot easier. Mine didn't want to come out and I did not want to break it. Remember, I was trying to salvage it. Of course, if you do break it, Maglite will sell you that part on the top there. So you can always repair it and keep on going. And what we were talking about earlier, you can see on here, you have another O-ring. Let me show you right. See, you have another O-ring, which gives you a good tight seal. So these flashlights are really well made. Let me put it back together, and I'll show you a little bit about for a 30-year-old battery, how well, I mean a 30-year-old flashlight, how well it works. Oh, and another thing I was going to say before I put it all back together. You have, uh, when you're doing it, when you're doing all this and you want to get it cleaned up, get yourself one of these uh, uh, wire brush things. I forget what these are called. Bottle cleaners? I forget what these are called. But anyway, put get one of these and you can use this to clean up the inside of it. You just slide it in there and go back and forth. Uh, it's a toughie. But go back and forth inside there and you can clean it up real good with this. So get one of those. Let's see. I still got my battery in there. And put this back. Now I'll show you for a 30 year old flashlight. Oh, and you can still get these. This is the old incandescent bulb. And I was amazed to find out you can still buy them from Magnolite with the incandescent bulb if for some reason you don't like LED. So you can get these in incandescent bulb and LED. You have a choice. And I think I was trying to remember. I believe I paid $25 for this 30 years ago. You can still get this flashlight today for $30 because it's antiquated, obviously. The LED in a 6-cell, Amazon had it for $93. I don't know. You might be able to find a better deal somewhere else. I'm not sure. But that was the Amazon price. I'm going to show you what uh, a light, how great a light this flashlight produces. For a 30-year-old flashlight, check this out. And it, the light is adjustable. You can go narrow beam, wide beam. You can do whatever you like. But let me turn off the light here and look at that. That is an excellent beam there for a 30-year-old incandescent flashlight. That's why people like these. That's why I didn't want to lose it. So I hung on to it, and I'm glad I brought it back. And the thing also about this, uh, the button on here, which is very convenient, is that the light activates on the down pressure, not on the up. And with this button, I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what the proper name would be of it is, but... You, you can press it down and not let it click into place, and you can hold it to get the light. So in other words, you can do Morse code. See, it doesn't stay in play. It doesn't click in. Of course, you can click it in if you want, and it'll stay there. And you click it to let it go. Or if you just need a quick light, press it, hold it, let it go. Press, let go. So that is fairly convenient. So I hope... This will help some of you guys that have old flashlights, or mag lights, I should say. Old mag lights that have become a problem child. I hope you can bring them back. 
just like I did. It won't be easy, but it's worth it. It's a good flashlight. Take care of it, hang on to it, and you'll be able to say like me, it's a 30-year-old piece of work. It's not a piece of work. It's a 30-year-old masterpiece, let's call it that. It's a 30-year-old old friend that I enjoy having around. So, like and subscribe. I hope you like uh, this uh, intro into mag lights and how to take care of them. And I hope to see you on the next video. Talk to you guys soon. See you later. Bye for now.